Hello everyone, welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we will be discussing numericals based on consumer surplus. Let's first understand what consumer surplus is. What is consumer surplus? Consumer surplus is basically the difference between what a consumer is willing to pay and what he actually pays. So, how do we represent it? So, consumer surplus is it is what a consumer is willing to pay minus what he actually pays. So, this is what is consumer surplus. Now, what a consumer is willing to pay. So, the amount of money a consumer is willing to pay, it depends on utility or satisfaction. So, this depends on utility or satisfaction that he gets from consuming a certain good or a commodity. Now, let's say there's a certain good and he gets a greater amount of satisfaction from consuming that commodity or good. So, the amount of money that he would be willing to pay would be obviously greater. So, greater the utility, greater would be the amount that he would be willing to pay. So, how do we represent it? Now, what a consumer is willing to pay, how do we represent it? This is simply equal to summation of marginal utility minus what he actually pays. This is nothing but price multiplied by the number of units. Now, why is it summation of MU? The total utility that he derives from consuming a commodity will be summation of MU. And what he pays will be simply price multiplied by quantity. So, this is one formula. We also have other formula. So, in terms of integration, we have consumer surplus as so consumer surplus is equal to So, this formula is what we are going to use in our examples. So, this is in terms of integration. Using this formula, we will be calculating consumer surplus in our question. So, this is our question. The demand function P is equal to 30 minus 2x and supply function 2p is equal to 5 plus x. Find consumer surplus. Now, first of all, we will see what is given in our question. So, our demand function is p is equal to 30 minus 2x. This becomes a demand function. And a supply function is
P is equal to five plus x. So this is a supply function. Now we'll just simplify this now first. So we can write this as P is equal to five plus x. Divided by two, and we all know that in equilibrium, so in equilibrium we know that a demand D is equal to S supply. So we are going to equate these equations. So what we have is. So we have P is equal to thirty minus two x as our demand function, and supply function is P is equal to five plus x by two. So we'll just equate these two terms. So our demand function is. Thirty minus two x, and from our previous slide we can see that our supply function is p is equal to five plus x by two. So firstly we are going to find p and x. So now, how to simplify this term? So we have uh, this as thirty into two. We'll do this. That is two into thirty minus two x is equal to five plus x. Now, simplifying further, what we get is two thirty is a Sixty minus two two is a four x. That is equal to five plus x. Now what we get is x plus four x. This gives us five x. And sixty minus five. This gives us fifty five. So. What we have is x is equal to fifty five divided by five. So our x becomes equal to eleven. So our x is equal to eleven. Now we will find what our p is. So now we have. P is equal to thirty minus two x. So we are going to substitute the value of x in this. So our x is equal to eleven. So what do we get? Is P is equal to thirty minus Two into eleven, so we get our p as thirty minus two into eleven is twenty-two. So what we get our p is so our p is equal to thirty minus twenty-two is eight. So we get our values of p and x. So we get x as eleven. And P as eight. Now, how are we going to calculate consumer surplus? So, the next step would be consumer surplus. So, we have seen that a formula for consumer surplus is. Integration of P dx minus 
P naught X naught. So integration of zero to X naught P D X minus P naught X naught. So from our previous slide, what we have seen is our X is equal to eleven and our P is equal to eight. So what we get is our P naught is equal to eight. And our x naught is equal to eleven. So this is what we have. Now, in this case, we have p naught and x naught, and we have p dx. That is, p is this function thirty minus two x. We'll integrate this function. So what we have is zero to now our x naught is eleven. So this becomes equal to eleven. Now p dx. So p dx we have thirty minus two x. So we'll take this. Minus p naught x naught. So now our p naught is eight, and x naught is eleven. So eight into eleven. Now, further simplifying this, what we get is. So the most important formula for integration is, I'll write this over here. When we have x raised to n dx, then integration of x raised to n is x raised to n plus one upon n plus one. So this is what we are going to use over here. Now, in this case, what we have is now first we'll do this. Eight into eleven is eighty-eight. Now we'll look at this part now. Integration. So integration of thirty. Thirty would be. So in this case, our x is x raised to zero. So what we have is we have x raised to zero. So what is going to be integration of this term? So x raised to zero dx. The integration for this term would be x raised to zero plus one because in this case we have n. Is equal to zero. So we have zero plus one as one upon zero plus one. That is one, and we have thirty x raised to zero. So this would become equal to thirty x. Now, similarly, we are also going to integrate this term two x. In this case, we have x raised to one. So the formula in this case would become. In this case, n is equal to one. So we have integration of x raised to one dx. This would be equal to. Now this would be x raised to one plus one is two. Upon again n is one, so one plus one is two. So what we have is two. An integration of x raised to one we have already seen it is x uh, x raised to two upon two. So this is what we have. Now. A next step would be we'll simplify this term. So what we have is thirty x minus so two two gets cancelled. What we have is x square. Now 
minus 88 remains as it is. So now, our consumer surplus is 30x minus x square minus 88. So now from here, 30x minus x square, we have this and then minus 88. So simplifying this, what we get is, this is equal to 30, substituting x is equal to 11 first. So 11 minus 11 square minus of now comes uh, x substituting x is equal to 0. What we get is 30 into 0 minus x is equal to 0. So 0 square. Minus 88. So simplifying this what we get is so 30 into 11 is 330 minus 11 square is 121 and then we have minus this becomes 13 to 0 is 0 minus 0 square this becomes 0 what we have is just minus 88. So we have 330 minus 121 that is equal to 209 minus 88 and 209 minus 88 gives us 121. So our value of consumer surplus is 121. So we have seen how we can use the formula of integration in terms of consumer surplus and find the value of consumer surplus in examples like this. So that's it for this video. In our subsequent videos, we will also be discussing numericals on producer surplus. So do like and subscribe our channel. Thank you.